All right, in the second example, we have a case where there are two triangles that are possible with the given measurements. And so we have angle A equal to 50 degrees, side A is 2.5, and side C is 3. And so I'm going to show you geometrically, and then I'll show you algebraically how you can figure out the same thing. I know that side C or ang an angle, excuse me, angle C is going to be down here somewhere. And so I take my, we'll take our side of 2.5 and we'll place it in here and we'll swing it, we'll make one triangle with it. Here's one of my triangles and so here we can see that side C, or angle C is going to be right here at this corner. In which case C would be an acute angle. Side A is 2.5 inches. This is not drawn completely to scale, but it's it's close. And we can solve this triangle by using the ratio of A to sine of A, and then we can find angle C. So let's first solve the first triangle. So we'll set up our ratio of angle A and side A and angle C and side C. We have 2.5 is to the sine of 50 as 3 is to the sine of C. Setting the cross products equal and dividing gives us sine C equal to 3 times the sine of 50 degrees over 2.5. So C will be the inverse sine of that value. From our calculator we hit second sine of 3 sine 50 divided by 2.5, close the parentheses, and our calculator gives us 66.8. And if we round uh, angles to the nearest whole number, we'll have 67 degrees, approximately. So we've got angle C. We can find angle B by subtracting these two angles from 180. So B equals 63 degrees. And now we can find side B by using the law of sines. 2.5 is to the sine of 50 as six, uh, side B is to the sine of 63. And solving uh, by multiplying the cross products and dividing we'll get B is approximately equal to 2.5 times the sine of 63 degrees divided by the sine of 50 degrees. And we'll round that to the nearest tenth, so approximately 2.9. And in this case it would be inches. But you can see here that there's actually more than one triangle to be drawn because if I if I move side A I could swing that in and instead of having an acute angle for C I would have an obtuse angle and so that's what we're going to do down in the second triangle so down here we'll take our 2.5 side that I had set up ahead of time and now we swing that in so we now have an obtuse angle instead of an acute and so angle C is right here. How do we find this obtuse angle? Well, we set up the problem in a similar fashion. We're going to have the same exact trig ratio set up. We've got the 2.5 is to the sine of 50 as 3 is to the sine of C. Solving for sine C, we get sine C equal to 3 sine 50 over 2.5. So we know angle C is going to be the inverse sine of 3 sine 50 over 2.5. But we already got one value for this, and that was back in our first triangle. And we said that that was 67 degrees. We evaluate it right here, the inverse sine of 3 sine 50 over 2.5. And so let's give that a little subscript and call it C sub 1. 
C sub 1 is the acute angle, 67 degrees. But what we know is that sine is positive in the first and second quadrants. So the inverse sine of a positive value, and this value right here when you type it into your calculator, is positive. So the first quadrant angle the calculator will always give you. The second quadrant angle that has the same trig ratio, you need to find that yourself. And since we know that if we go all the way to pi here, or 180 degrees, that if we want to find this obtuse angle, we have to take 180 and subtract our reference angle of 67. So that will give us our C sub 2. So C sub 2 would equal 180 minus 67 degrees, which would be 113 degrees. So our second angle C, the obtuse angle, is 113. And then we would find angle B by subtracting the 50 and the 113 from 180. So B equals 17 degrees. And then lastly, to find side B, we'll use the law of sines. We know that the 2.5 over the sine of 50 degrees is going to equal B over the sine of 17. And solving for B, we can go right into our calculator after we set our cross products equal to each other. B would equal the 2.5 times the sine of 17 divided by the sine of 50. So 2. 0.5 sine of 17 degrees divided by the sine of 50 degrees equals approximately 0.95. If we round that to the nearest tenth, that actually gives us 1.0. So you can see geometrically that we've got the acute triangle, uh, or the acute angle C, which resulted in one triangle, and then that second possible angle that you could get was an obtuse angle that had the same exact trig ratio as the, the 67 degree angle. So you get the second triangle. But how can you tell algebraically? And that's what I want to show you in the next, uh, next portion of this video. We want to look at the side-side angle scenario algebraically and see how you can figure out that there are two possible triangles algebraically. So we're going to treat this just like any other law of science problem and we'll assume that there's one triangle and we'll draw that triangle. So we've got triangle ABC a is 50 degrees, little a is 2.5 inches, little c is 3. And so at this point, we're just assuming that c is an acute angle, but again, we don't know if there's two triangles, but we're going to go ahead and solve this algebraically. And so the, the first thing that we can find here is angle c. We don't have any information about b, and so we'll do that first. And so we'll set up our, our law of sines ratios. 2.5 over the sine of 50 equals 3 over the sine of C. That leads us to sine C is equal to 3 sine 50 over 2.5. So C is equal to the inverse sine. Fi we know that when sine is positive in the first and the second quadrants, and that the calculator is always going to give us the acute angle first. So when there is an answer, we'll get that acute angle right away. The question is, is the obtuse angle going to be something that we can use? So we'll start by finding the acute angle. So just like we did before, second sine 3 sine 50 divided by 2.5, close them, and hit enter. And we get that same value. We get, we're going to round to the nearest whole number, so that would be 67 degrees. 
but what I want to do right away is find the second possible angle. We're not sure if we can use it or not, but this is our acute angle. We know we have at least one triangle when we get that acute angle. And we can, we can later solve this. How do we know if we have a second? Well, we go ahead and find our second, our obtuse C, which would be the 180 minus the 67 degrees. This is the second possible angle. We're not sure if we can use it or not. This is equal to 113 degrees. So the question is, we have again, we've got this, the acute angle, which we can always use. Now we've got this obtuse angle, which is the angle from here to here, which we just said was 113. We got that by taking the 180 and subtracting the little reference angle in here. If I were to draw a second triangle with that 113, what I know is that I already have a 50 degree angle in the problem. I've got the 113. And so the question is, when I add up the 50 and the 113, as long as I'm less than 180, that leaves me room for a third angle. And if I take the 50 plus the 113, that gives me 163. Since that is less than 180, we know there's a second triangle. And at this point, since we already saw both of them, um, I'm not going to solve this, but you would take the that second triangle, you would take the, um, the 180 and minus the 163 to get your third angle. So that third angle would have to be the 17, and then you, we would solve this, we would solve this triangle using the method above. All right, so algebraically, just to recap, when you have side-side angle, and you get an answer, you don't get an error, we know that we're going to use that acute angle, at least there's one triangle that has the acute angle. To find out if you're going to have a second triangle, always find the obtuse angle anyway. We'll just decide at that point whether we can use it or not. So we find the obtuse angle, which was the 113. We add that to the original angle and if that is less than 180, then we know we have enough we have another triangle because there's enough room, enough degrees left over that you can have that third angle.